This portion of CardioSource video news coverage of AHA 2010 is brought to you by Novartis Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. Well, I'm here with Dr. Jim Genuzzi of Massachusetts General Hospital, who's just presented data from the PROTECT trial showing a clinical benefit of using NT-ProBNP in titrating therapy in patients with heart failure. And so uh, I want to ask you, Jim, uh, this is when a topic talked about a lot of using a biomarker to tailor therapy. How is this uh, study that you did um, one that can move on? There have been a few trials that have done this so far. Right. So, you know, as you know, Chris, this concept's been around for a while. It's just taken us some time to really ascertain the best approach for how to apply the, the approach of guided therapy, as we call it. The idea basically is that concentrations of natriuretic peptides are very markedly prognostic in chronic heart failure. And we also know that more aggressive therapy targeting lower natriuretic peptide values seems to be associated with better outcomes, but it really needed to be tested in a prospective manner in a logical, uh, logically designed trial. And one of the things that we did in this study, which is different from other studies, is that we looked at patients mainly with left ventricular systolic dysfunction in whom a treatment algorithm is pretty clear, you know, vasodilators, beta blockers, aldo blockers. And we targeted a, a level of nt pro -BNP lower than many other trials had examined previously and succeeded in achieving that goal in a very large percentage of patients. So tell me a little bit about exactly what you do. You have a patient come in, they randomize the intensive arm, you measure nt pro say it's uh, 2,500. What would be the steps that you do over the subsequent months? Yeah, so it was a great learning experience for us as clinicians. So the first step, the foundation is always clinical, you know, the clinical evaluation of the patient. So assessing for signs of congestion, a, a, a re-examination of salt and water restriction and lifestyle modification that the patient, you know, needs to do obviously to help themselves but then we would look at their medical program and identify potential gaps in their in their treatment so if we had some room to inch on some of their medications because we really felt at the entry point of the study that these patients were very well managed just to start with and yet we found the seams you know we were able to find places where we could improve their therapy quite significantly whether it was adding an aldosterone blocker to a patient that was class 1 or class 2 which you know prior to emphasis we you know would not normally have done perhaps. Um, look for the opportunities perhaps to apply uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy at an earlier time, getting them into an exercise program in cardiac rehab, which is known to lower natriuretic peptides. Now, you found a significant clinical benefit. Do you want to tell us the, the primary result? Sure, absolutely. So we found, among other things, that the total cardiovascular events in the trial were cut in nearly fifth by 50%, so almost by half. We reduced heart failure hospitalization, worsening heart failure, even a trend towards reduced cardiovascular death in a population of patients with an extraordinarily low mortality rate. So it was a real home run on a clinical level. Well, that's terrific. Well, um, what is next step? This was a single center study, and I know if uh, I have patients with heart failure, I know just yeah. uh, a terrific algorithm. What's next for uh, this approach? Well, we have a, a couple of things in mind. The first is we, we want to try to understand better the mechanistic benefits. In other words, why does a lower natriuretic peptide value predict fewer cardiovascular events? So we're looking at the effects of guided therapy on cardiac structure and function, remodeling, left ventricular function. So that's the first thing. But then ultimately, the pivotal study is really necessary, and we're in discussions right now to, to plan and execute a large multi-center trial to really get this, this approach to the level of guidelines and get it out to the rest of the world, because we really do feel as if we can benefit our patients with chronic heart failure quite significantly. Oh, well, it's just terrific. I think uh, something that uh, we can probably start taking home with us from AHA here of the of the concept of more aggressive uh, titration. So congratulations. Thank I'm you. Chris Cannon with uh, CardioSource Video News. Special thanks to Novartis Pharmaceuticals Incorporated for supporting continuing coverage of CardioSource Video News at AHA 2010.